When working with a table of data, what if I told you that you could go from looking at all of the data to looking at only what you're interested in just with a click? So imagine being able to see just the 2023 data, or just the profit for the Northeast region, or just the sales for gloves, or sales and profit by sales rep, and be able to get to any of these views with just one click, even if you wanted to return to the original full set of data. This can all be done with a feature in Excel called Custom Views. Custom Views allows you to capture the hidden or visible state of rows and columns and give that captured state a name. This way, with just a click of that saved name, you can return to that filtered state. The Custom Views feature is located on the View tab here in the Workbook Views section. Now, before you start creating a bunch of custom views, a good strategy is to create a custom view that essentially shows everything. This way, when you switch to a custom view, it's very easy to switch back to where you started. So with nothing hidden, I'm gonna to go to Custom Views, and in the Custom Views dialog box, I'm going to add a view called All Data. Now this captured Excel state with nothing hidden. All rows, all columns are visible, nothing filtered. Well, now I'd like to see the sale and the profit for each sales rep. This would require highlighting every column except the sales rep sale and profit column, and then hide the columns with, say, right-click hide. So sometimes I want to see just this view of my data, but sometimes I want to see everything. Well, I'll go up to custom views and I'll add another custom view based on this current setup. And I'll call this sales and profit by sales rep. Hit OK. If I were to manually unhide those columns again, and so now I'm back to where I began, if I want to see the sale and profit by sales rep, instead of manually re-highlighting all those columns, I could just go to custom view, click sales and profit by sales rep, and then click show and I'm right back to where I was in that filtered state. Because I captured the original unfiltered state, I can now go to custom views and choose all data and click show, and I'm back to where I began. Let's look at another example. Suppose I wanna see only sales for 2023 without the profit information. So I'll go to the profit column, right click hide, then I'll scroll down to one of my years for 2023, and here's a filtering tip. If you want to filter for 2023, take one of the instances for that year, right click, and choose filter by cell value and it will filter for that sales value. In fact, I don't need to see the individual year, quarter, or month, or even division ID information, so I'll hide those as well. Now I'll go to custom view, create a new custom view by clicking add, and I'll call this 2023 sales. Hit okay. I'll return back to my all data view. Now let's create one that shows the sales for the Northeast region, but only the sales and the cost. So here's an instance of Northeast. I'll right click filter by sell value. I'm going to hide all the columns before the region column, and I'm going to hide the cost column. Now to capture this, we'll go to custom view, click add, and I'll call this sales and profit northeast. We'll return to all data. When I save the file, these custom views are saved as part of file data. So I can now go to custom view and say sale and profit by sales rep. I could go to custom view look at 2023 sales, and I could go to custom view and do sale and profit for the Northeast. And then finally, I could return to all data. Here's a little tip. Since all data is the view I'm gonna be returning to most often, I can make sure it always stays at the top of the list by beginning the name of that view with an underscore. Alphabetically, underscore comes before numbers and letters. So if you have dozens and dozens of custom views, all data is always at the top. One of the downsides to using custom views is you need to switch to the View tab, go to the Custom Views button, and then select the Custom View from the dialog box and click Show. You can execute custom views faster by adding a drop-down list that displays all of your custom views in your Quick Access Toolbar. This way you can be on any ribbon and still have access to your custom views with just a click. Now doing this requires a little bit of digging up front, but it's still quite easy to do. If we go to the end of the Quick Access Toolbar and click the small down arrow, we'll go down to More Commands, and then in the Choose Commands From dropdown, we're gonna choose All Commands. Now it may take a moment for the list to generate, but when we scroll down, what we're looking for is this entry here called Custom Views. We'll click that entry on the left, click the Add button in the middle, and move that over to the right. We'll click OK and now you have a drop-down built right into the title bar of your window. Clicking the drop-down will display all of the custom views. So I could switch to sale and profit by sales rep, sale and profit for the Northeast region, 2023 sales, or all data with just a click. Well, technically two clicks. Now you can't create new views from this drop-down or delete existing views, 
so you'll still have to return to the View tab and go to the Custom Views dialog box to perform those actions. Now I've got a bonus use for you. To make this even easier for your users, especially if you send this file to them and they don't have the custom quick access toolbar dropdown like you do, what if we could give them buttons like this to switch to the 2023 sales, the Northeast sales and profit, sales and profit by sales rep, or all data. I achieved this feature by using macros and then assigning those macros to buttons. Now this goes beyond the scope of this video, but I'll show you what the macros look like. They're actually quite simple. It's just a simple one-line macro using the activeworkbook.customviews instruction. The only thing you'd need to change in this code is what lies between the double quotes, and that's the name of the custom view. Once those macros were created, I just went up to insert, shapes, and then added one of these shapes. I added the rounded rectangle shape, sized it, placed the text on it, but the trick is to right-click on the shape and choose assign macro. And then from here, I could pick from one of the four macros that I created. Now when the user opens the file, they place their pointer over the button, they get the click icon, and they're instantly in that view. As you can see, with a little creativity, you can have a lot of fun with custom views. Thanks for watching, and if you have a suggestion for an upcoming video, feel free to put it in the comments. And remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.